Miss Elise Quevedo here. I'm here today with the incredible, the one and only Antonio Grasso, all the way from Italy. <laughs> Hi, Antonio. Hi, Elise. Hi, everyone, guys. I hope you are good and I hope you are, you, you, you are at home. I'm here in Italy at home. Stay safe, stay home. Indeed. So I'm all the way in Spain, two of the countries where we're in lockdown, so we've got extra time in our hands. So we thought we'll jump on this chat. And uh, of course, Antonio, for those of you that may not know, it's an incredible tech influencer and also the CEO of uh, DBI. And my first question for you is actually uh, to tell us who you are, a little bit of your background, and uh, what do you do, Antonio? Yeah, Elise, um, I'm a deep technical guy. <clears throat> I started 37 years ago as a software developer, you know, and then I evolved myself, my career as a technical a software architect, uh, system architect, and then, and then more, 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 more during the years. I participated in many projects, many large projects for enterprises in Italy and also for um, public government. Uh, I'm a designer of the second um, digital process in Italy about, uh, you know, the refugee, the how to, is something for the, our Ministry of Interior was some years ago. And then I started a lot on cryptography. I am really, I have deep knowledge of cryptography because I worked in digital signage in Italy on a uh, project that integrate digital sign, uh, etc. And then after this long experience, three years ago, I started my own company, my startup in Italy, Naples. Let's say, okay, put your value uh, and your money in, <laughs> in a new company. <laughs> in a new company and try to start what's happening. And then uh, uh, something really magic happened, uh, Elise, because, uh, yeah, you called me a B2B tech influencer. I, I, I want to say thank you because it's a really <laughs> appreciate. But uh, I, I share what I like to share. It's not, uh, you know, I'm not following, uh, you know, something that, okay, this, this, this gain more like, this is more, it is. no, I share what I like to share. If you like, you can engage with me. I really, I'm really happy to, and then I write, uh, now um, currently I write articles, I write um, bloggers on that. But uh, really, I, I need to say thank you to my past experience on cryptography because now it's very, it's, you know, much, m m many technologies are focusing, are uh, revolving around cryptography. Let's talk about uh, blockchain that is really, unbelievable so definitely now i have my company i'm happy and uh, i'm working in italy on a project a local project in italy real life project technical project and then uh, i'm working around the world and this is really amazing to me that's it wow I, I don't really know what to answer to that first of all 37 years in business that is uh, a huge accomplishment and, and a great inspiration and i know that even also your daughter is in a similar industry to you she's kind of following on the footsteps so so you're definitely inspiring a lot of people and that is for example one of the reasons uh we met we met last year because uh both both of us as global thought leaders or influencers in the tech world we were invited to an event in paris and uh, you mentioned earlier you know you're a b2b influencer but what does actually being a global thought leader or an influencer mean to you? What does that mean for business? Yeah, for business, yeah, I, I want to say that for business, it's, uh, it's very important because I'm, now I'm splitting the revenues of my company on a local project, technical project in Italy and uh, uh, all over the world the projects that i'm uh, managing as uh, you know how to communicate how to better communicate this technology is changing uh, role or, or let me say better the role of technology is changing is no more something when i started you know do it something faster but now is do it something faster but do it differently because you have a different relation between people uh, people to people, people to things. So, and I like to 
share informative content. I feel personally very satisfied and very gratified for this because, uh, yeah, it's something that you put on the table, what you have in your mind, what you, uh, what you pile it up in your years of experience and what now you are sharing with others. It's really amazing. I'm really happy to do that. I, I, I do it with passion. I do it with really passion every day, every day. I love that. And actually, you touched in a great point because I feel uh, quite similarly. When people think of uh, an influencer, for example, people think of a YouTuber automatically or an Instagram only. And when it comes to business, this is why the term global thought leader or key opinion leader is used more, but it's technically just a fancy word for influencer, but in the business world. And uh, I think, uh, especially people like ourselves, we don't really think ourselves as influencers or those fancy keywords because we share what we're passionate about. This is exactly what you said. Yeah. We share what yeah. we love, not because people ask us to do it, but because we want to share that content. And then when we do that, that's when brands come to us and they go, hey, Antonio or Elise or, or John or Mike, hey, uh, can you come to our events? Or we would love to collaborate with you because they see real authentic content um, yeah. and they're passionate about something. And like you said, you, for example, you have nearly four decades of experience. You're on a high elite team that many people are aspiring to be. So thank you so much for that. And we're, we're on this topic of these global thought leaders. Uh, and I've just mentioned, we, we collaborate with uh, many brands. So why do you think collaboration is actually so important in business, especially now with what's happening in the world? Okay, I think... Uh that uh, the digital diffusion has started uh, some many processes you know digital diffusion together enabled uh, the spread of digital edition because you can reach people uh, at fingertip you know with the mobile phone etc and uh, th th this is uh, changing our attitude and this is something that we call digital transformation you know the different relation between uh, people uh, and people, institution, economies changing. Uh, it's uh, something like a paradigm shift. It's uh, really changing uh, um, everything in our life. Uh, so I think we need to watch closely to uh, the development of this, uh, of this transformation. But I like to see, I share what you have in my mind. You know, when we talk about uh, technology, let's say about blockchain, for example. Blockchain is a generic uh, technology. Many people confuse it with Bitcoin, uh, with cryptocurrency. This is not uh, the same thing. They are two different things. I like to uh, study to research how to integrate blockchain in the business process because my field is the are the business process, is the uh, organization and the infusion of uh, technology in that process uh, to create uh, a better outcome for company in terms of uh, cost saving uh, or reaching other uh, opportunities, creating new opportunities. Wow, that's incredible. And you've just mentioned, you know, digital transformation. This is actually one of uh, your uh, key focuses, which is, of course, uh, for that we need the emerging technologies. So can you tell us a little bit, in your opinion, what are some of the main benefits and some of the main challenges of emerging technologies as a, gener as a generic rule? Yeah. Um, Elisa, as I said before, Technology is changing the role. It's not only something that enables you to do things faster or digitizing. It's creating new opportunities. Imagine, for example, the, let's say the MP3. The MP3 for the music has changed everything. You know, before we got vinyl, we have uh, tapes, but now we have MP3. Okay, so it's a project, a product that is uh, digitized, you know, become digital. And then this uh, not only created uh, uh, the MP3 itself, but it opens a new kind of business model. For example, Apple Store. You know, many years ago when I started, I 
we, we, we have only cassette, we have, you know, not the, <laughs> the three giga, three gigabits of uh, audio to, with a thousand and thousand. No, we have only seven, eight uh, with our uh, tape. <laughs> I can turn it over and then there will be yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> children yeah. have no idea what that means. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and then the, this process is starting; it is uh, ever more uh, present. So that the, the role of technology is changing. It's not only something that you need to set apart from your uh, mainstream processes, but it's something that is uh, every time contaminating your your business, your business. So you need to really think about uh, how your business model can be changed by technology, because. Uh, for example, we say Apple Store before, but we can see we can talk also about Netflix. How Netflix is the 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 a new business model created by digitization of movies, for example. So, emerging technology are in one side they are enable us to do something better and faster, and on the on on the another another lane. They are creating new opportunities for everyone. Imagine uh, our presence, you know, our, we are B2B tech influencer. Why we need a tech influencer? Why brands are talking with influencers, no more with uh, media, TV, or no, no more. Uh, um, just they are moving some budget. <laughs> Please don't kill me, media. <laughs> we understand, we get it. <laughs> yeah. This is something that is generating, you know, by this intermediation. You know, we are living in a world where uh, uh, people want to, uh, want to talk with other people. They trust me, I have a good reputation. Reputation creates trust. Trust creates influence. You know, this is a, an analogy. University of uh, Indo in the, in um, sorry in Holland, in Netherlands, uh, I was listening a professor of that university talk about social media. She started by saying, "Okay, reputation create trust. Trust create influence. This is influence. It's something that many people trust. We know what we are talking for, so." They trust us. We have good reputation. We are influencing them because we are. And this is, I think, something that is happening real now. It's a, it's a, a holistic participation of various subjects, various factors that are creating this new world. But this, uh, this phenomenon, this intermediation, is absolutely driven by digital diffusion and digitalization. Well, what an incredible yeah. answer, Antonio, I, and I agree completely. And, and the key here, I love that you mentioned the word trust. Uh, a few days ago, I recorded a video on trust in technology because it is so important. And uh, it is, I believe, one of those main challenges as well. If we don't have trust on what's coming, we normally have fear. So either you have trust or you have fear of a technology. And one of the biggest uh, things in technology is not actually what the technology does, but the person. We tend to be people to people, like we said, but at the same time, we need B2B. But there is a massive, uh, you know, emergency in both of them. Both come together, and hence this, these collaborations we've just been talking about. Hence being a person of influence is a person you trust, which is why companies not only use media and journalists or uh, the normal fashion old school PR, but they now collaborate with influencers or again, just people that are truly passionate about what they do. Because if we don't have trust, the fear comes in and then nothing happens. And um, mm -hmm. earlier on, you mentioned a little bit about blockchain, uh, which I know is also one of your fields of expertise. And we'll definitely do a more in-depth video on blockchain. But uh, I wanted to Let's ask do you, it. Let's do it. right? We've got plenty Let's of time. Do Let's do more. Um, but I would Let's like to have an overall view on uh, this is a buzzword at the moment that many people don't even really understand. So where are we right now as we hit 2020 and the new decade? What is actually blockchain and what is it doing for us? Or what will it do? 
Okay, let me start some years ago when I was young. <laughs> many, <laughs> <times>. <laughs> many years ago. Many years ago. Okay. Um, when I started as developer, I, I was uh, dealing with uh, with the files. You know, a sequential file, a file. You need to read the records for that file. You know, I started when uh, we 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 was. Uh, in the you know we have a mass magnetic uh, memory so we not, not the, the, the 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 sk so that was uh, some years ago so we use a file and then they created someone created a database this database this engine that you don't need to read all the file and then sell you can order to him to return the data set specified so and then many people talked about the database, but now database is the normality, you know, it's something, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, it's in the cloud, it's in the mobile phone, you have the light version. You know. So the database is changing the way we manage data. And this was the, really the first step, creating database that is a different way to manage data. Data are not stored on single file. You need to put, you need to join, you need to read. Everyone was, a, when I, I was writing a COBOL program 35 years ago. Why I talked about database? Because as the database did in the years that it become the focus of the enterprise data is the owner and is the, let me say, the storage, the retriever is everything. Now, I think, uh, blockchain will become the same as database but now blockchain is uh, let me say something like a database you can store information in a secure way the information are immutable because they are linked in the chain etc but uh, the real shift and now they, uh, sorry many people are using blockchain the technology that's based on distributed ledger technology because we have not only blockchain we have also tango we have other technology that is based on the distributed ledger technology blockchain if we consider blockchain as a storage of data we need to use the data. We need to, how we use the data, we, where we use the data. We use the data, if we talk about enterprises, we, we use in the business process. So we need to infuse the technology in the business process, and we need to talk that, that, that business process mostly are based on transaction. So yes, blockchain can store transaction, but we need to also think how to, perform the business process because uh, the transaction is the result of something that happened, you know, uh, some way respond. And then we need to talk about smart contracts. That is the real technology that enable blockchain in the business process of enterprise. Now with blockchain, we are at the starting, at early stage, I think. In the next year, distributed ledger technology because I think will be blockchain, but we are not sure if blockchain is will be mainstream in the next year for the distributed technology. You know, technology innovation is very fast. Can be someone creates something new that is a distributed ledger technology, but is not is not working as blockchain. And then we we see many more changing in the uh, blockchain um, landscape. The marriage of blockchain with the business projects is possible using the smart contract. Smart contract is something bigger because it's not only transactional contract. We have also uh, autonomous organization. We can create a decentralized autonomous organization, decentralized apps. So we need to rethink how to manage our business process. But I think blockchain is really in the in the beginning, when we, you know, the buzzword will will become low, we, we, we can flatten the curve, let me say flatten the curve of blockchain as we are talking about coronavirus today. So when we, uh, are, when we will flat the curve, we, we will see blockchain after this initial, initial 
exuberance about it, we will see really a complete, as, as, as we did in database at the beginning, wow, really, this is so powerful. And then now it become normality. In the next year, will become a normality, but now we are in the early stage, my view. Wow, Antonia, you, you blow my mind away. And we are definitely going to do a video very soon on just blockchain. Absolutely. Because what you've just said, and I'll be honest, this is the reason I love to talk to people like you. You're real. Uh, you're actually telling the truth. There are so many people out there that are experts on blockchain that say this is the next best thing since sliced bread and blockchain is, you know, the blah, blah. And I'm thinking a lot of these technologies, of course, they're all good. Of course, they're all amazing. But you have to have a reservation as well because they are not the only ones. And I love that you're real, that you say we have to wait, that we have to see yeah. where it goes to truly say this is something here to stay. We need to be realistic. Years. We need to be realistic on the technology. Yeah. We cannot live with the hype and myth. We need to be realistic. It's a technology that join using cryptography, using uh, hash, using something that is uh, technical, and then we can talk in a, in a new video, but we need to be realistic, foot on the ground, this is uh, something uh, like a database, uh, that, yes, has many characteristics different from database, but we, you need to infuse in the business process, uh, it's the only way to spread blockchain, as the, this, sorry, distributed intelligence technology. Yeah. The, again, it is about embracing these technologies. We need to learn what they do, but at the same time, yes, don't be the first one to say, this is the best thing when tomorrow, uh, like Bitcoin, oh, Bitcoin is the best thing, and all of a sudden it takes a massive dive. You need to be careful and you need technologies. You need to allow them time. Like Yoda would say, patience is virtue. And I'm a big believer on that. You know, get excited about what's coming. But at the same time, remember, not a single thing is everything. Just like social media, I, we move from the social media world, the digital world, yeah. but it's not everything. Yeah, we need to de de also demystify. Yeah. Elise, I'm, I'm inviting you to make a video, next video, if you like, I think yes. our audience will appreciate, yes. on demystifying the emerging technology. What really mean blockchain? What really mean artificial yeah. intelligence? What really we are talking when we talk about the Internet of Things? Thank you. Because so the, yeah, demystify. Yes, because of are. course, and no disrespect to the analysts, please. I've got many friends. You guys are analysts of the world, but when they write or they talk, you talk to your other analysts. You're talking to people that get it. And what I love to do is hashtag real talk, which means. Forget the big buzzwords that people think make you so more smart and more intelligent. And I want everybody to truly understand what, what yeah. they, sometimes, even the word digital transformation. Some people, you say that and they go, uh, what is that? Because not everybody is in the digital world. Not everybody is uh, on the B2B tech influencing business. So yes, I'm, I'm, I love that idea. So definitely let's do it. So guys, we're going to do a video on the mystify, yeah. some of the big buzzwords of the tech world. Yeah, and then they mystify them. They mystify yeah. them. This is the real, yeah. <laughs> Antonio, yes. Rock on. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have two more questions for you because I could talk to you yeah. right now, but I think uh, yeah. well, we need to cut this one. So. One of my last two questions is, what are some of your most memorable moments in your career so far? And I know it's going to be really hard because you've got, again, four decades worth of stories. Maybe that's another video, Moments with Antonio uh, from Four Decades. But for now, give me one or two uh, that have truly made an impact on you based on what you do. Yeah, on, on my career was the appointment when I was appointed as uh, team leader in the in the in a big, big software project for public sector it was a million project, two, two million projects of the development. I was the team leader coordinating uh, 
hundreds of people. That was really amazing. It was was another another pet. Was another a starting a new things. And in my memory was that. And then also the new moment when I created my company. Of course, that I love yeah. that. This is it. When you have someone that can tell you this with this big smile that you have, that's when you know someone is truly happy with what they do. So my advice for everyone is always, please do what you love. Find something. You don't have to find out at 20 what you love or at 25. It doesn't matter how old you are to keep changing, to do something so that when you talk about it, you have a smile like Antonio just did when he shared <laughs> love his moments. Uh, I'm talking about that, what makes you happy. Uh, my last question is a little bit of, uh, about you, Antonio. Um, can you tell us one thing that not many people know about Antonio Grasso? I was a rocker. I, I was playing uh, in a rock group. I, I am a rocker, uh, hey. yes, I have my little nickname, I, I, and also I play online, I play Call of Duty, I'm a big fan of Call of Duty, I have a, wow. I'm a big community of that, and I have my nickname in the uh, Xbox One network is uh, Tony Rock, you know, Tony because Rock. I remember when I was young, I was a rocker, this is something wow. that I think can be interesting, yeah. I, I was playing the bus, you know, in the <laughs> in a group. So, and also, I like the rock, rock music. Is, uh, but I was um, a rocker. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for sharing that. I can see, guys, this is what I love to do. To yeah, find yeah. out a little bit more about what, who people are, because we are not defined just by, by what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, but what we're also passionate about when we switch off our tech hats and our daily business hats. And I can now see Antonio rocking on with some rock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Tony. So, uh, Tony Rock, Tony Rock. <laughs> so for any X1 or Xbox guys or for any player out there gaming world that uh, plays Call of Duty, please search for Tony Rock. <laughs> username and their, to their Antonio to play Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that is, is a big network. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Antonio, for joining me today. I know we're going to be doing... Um, a few more videos because uh, again the synergies are great and you have so much knowledge uh, to share that I definitely want to pick your brain on a few more topics so thanks again Antonio and just one quick uh, thing if uh, anybody wants to uh, contact you or know more about you uh, where should they go? A Twitter, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, my social presence is uh, big, so Twitter okay. and the grass, so, and uh, LinkedIn, Antonio Grasso search, watch my face in the photo, that's it, it's it. <laughs> and then I will be putting the link uh, right below with his... Oh, the link, yeah, 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 the social, the social channel. Uh, so once again, yeah, I, I, I yeah. greetings, Antonio. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Elise. It's uh, yeah, it was really good. It, it has been a really great pleasure, and looking forward to do next video together, demystifying technology. Exactly. Ciao, everyone. Thank you guys. Ciao. Ciao.